Welcome to Doors to Hope and Healing, an inside look at the many facets of work that is happening at the Department of Children and Families, between our staff, the families we serve, and our community partners. My name is Jacqueline Ford. I have had the honor of working for the department for almost 30 years. And although I may be familiar with many of the topics we bring to you, I have invited experts in those fields to help us dispel the myths and misconceptions that can often be barriers to our work. Join us as we open our doors and invite you to have a seat at our table. Craig, hello. Thanks so much for being on Doors to Hope and Healing. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So I got to know you um, in your work in the Central Transportation Unit, right? Um, for correct. the Department of Children and Families, mm -hmm. because you and your staff had helped me on a project that I was doing. And I was so intrigued by the work that you're doing for our children and families in the department. And I thought everybody should know about what's happening there. Um, and then, of course, you know, we've been in touch, and I was just so um, really enamored by your staff and what they thought of you and the, the culture that you've created as a supervisor of this unit um, because you know we spend a lot of time at work you know we spend much more time at work than we do often at home so when staff can come to work every single day and not only feel like they're making an impact on, on the community, on the children and families we serve, but that they enjoy being with one another. Um, I really think that you know that should be bottled and, and kind of sold throughout the department. <laughs> um, so today's um, uh, segment of Doors to Hope and Healing is going to talk about the work that you're doing um, in your unit. So if we can start by that, if you can just talk a little bit about what you know your role is and maybe even the history of how this unit was developed. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, the, the unit, um, the Central Transportation Unit was developed about two years ago. It, it went into effect. Um, it started with uh, about five uh, drivers that were hired. And they were hired in early January, and then COVID hit. And it kind of shut down the unit, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, the, the plans for development and growth kind of had to be tabled for a little while. Um, those five original drivers spent most of their time, instead of transporting clients, were, trans were responsible for P PPE mm -hmm. and things like that for the area offices throughout the state. Um, as COVID kind of you know, went away for a little bit, so to speak, in the summer and stuff like that, um, the agency decided to start hiring again uh, for drivers and to try and expand the unit. So in September of 2021, Mm -hmm. or excuse me, 2020, I apologize. Um, I came on board along with 19 other drivers, which automatically upped our capacity to 25 people. Um, and we then started transporting more clients, um, re uh, transportation requests started coming in. And I was then fortunate enough um, to be promoted to supervisor mm -hmm. of the unit um, in December of 2020 and I've been doing it ever since. Um, we have been able now to uh, go up to, we had 40 drivers and do do some uh, people um, moving on to other opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're hovering right around 30 drivers right now. Um, Can I interrupt you for one second? Absolutely. So when you talk about drivers or transporting clients, mm -hmm. for our viewers that are watching now, you know, we're talking about all facets of the Department of Children and Families, all yes. you know, the things that our staff are doing internally that many don't know about. So when you talk about hiring drivers, who are they driving for? Okay. The uh, drivers that we hire, um, first and foremost, they go through extensive background checks, mm -hmm. the, the interview process. Um, they are, they go through um, very... Um, what I would call rigorous training mm -hmm. in terms of um, all the, the basics, uh, you know, bl bloodborne pathogens, um, you know, CPR first aid, mm -hmm. car seat installations, mm -hmm. um, crisis intervention, mandated reporter training. Um, they go through racial injustice training, mm -hmm. all these different types of trainings to open their eyes and give them the tools that they need to 
deal with any situations that might arise while they're transporting their clients. Um, the clients that we transport are um, children and family members that are in the custody of DCF. Mm -hmm. um, we, our responsibilities are to uh, take these, these clients, we transport them to and from uh, supervised visits, mm -hmm. unsupervised visits, uh, to physical therapy appointments, to um, after school activities, to doctor's appointments, whatever they need transportation services wow. for, we're there to lend a helping hand and get the clients or their parents to where they need to be. So these are kids that are in probably foster care situations Correct. or maybe group home setting. Some are, Some yes. are. Yes. And um, when you talk about visitation, so through the court system, um, the court you know, mandates that our children are visiting with their parents because mm -hmm. our, you know, for our viewers watching, our goal is always reunification to the family whenever safely possible. Um, so these drivers are, are transporting for visits with their families. And are they responsible for supervising the visits as well? Uh, they are not responsible for supervising them. Mm -hmm. But, however, while they're in our custody or care, while we're transporting, we are responsible for their well-being and safety. Mm -hmm. So it's a very big, you know, it, it's it's a very, very important role um, sure. for these. And, it, and it's, you know, our drivers or my drivers take great pride in the work that they do. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's a huge commitment to take anyone from point A to point B and back safely. It, it definitely is. And um, fortunately, I have a great staff that that we, you know, we work together and our drivers um, will often volunteer to work overtime to accommodate the needs of our clients mm -hmm. so there we run we actually run different shifts throughout the day so uh, we run like a 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. 7 to 3 a 9 to 5 and an 11 to 7 oh, wow. um, and there's times where we'll get requests transportation requests in from social workers where a visit or whatever the activity might be doesn't end until 7:30, and like I said, I'm very fortunate where I can pick up the phone and contact one of the drivers and be like, "Hey, I've got you know this transportation request here. It's outside your normal working hours. Would mm -hmm. you be interested in taking it?" And I honestly can't think of any time where I've had to, to turn one down. Wow! For, you know, my drivers have been great. You know, yeah, they really, they're really have. committed. And they so, are. are they establishing relationships with these kids that they're driving? Are, is it the continuity of having the same driver whenever possible? Is that something that you try to ensure? Yeah, we 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 try to keep the same driver with the same client throughout the duration of um, the the request. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does happen on occasion where things will come in and we have to reshuffle the schedule just because of logistics and stuff like that. Um, but we we make every effort to keep the drivers and the clients together. Because what happens is, um, no matter the amount of time, it could be, as you know, and the viewers may not, however, you know, a, a custody of a child um, within DCF could be a few months, it could be mm -hmm. a year or longer. Um, so to keep the continuity with the driver and that client is paramount because what happens is they do develop relationships mm -hmm. while they're riding in the car. You know, some visits are real, I mean, some transports are real quick. It could be a 15 minute transport. Mm -hmm. Others, depending on where you're going in the state, could take an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. So during that time period, um, the drivers and the clients, a lot of times they, they, they just talk and become friends. Mm -hmm. And I, I have stories of drivers that will go to pick children up at school uh, to transport them home and the kids come running out of the school and give the drivers hugs. Oh. You know, and it's, it's like you wouldn't know any different. You would think that the children were, you know, that was the parent coming to pick them up. Right, right. So it, it's just, it's great to see. And the emails that come in from social workers that just basically call out or give a shout out to our drivers mm -hmm. that the job that they're doing and how much the, their client loves our drivers and stuff like that. It's it's a, the greatest feeling in the world. I can it imagine. Really you know, and when we talk about, um, you know, kids that go into foster care and how we want our foster parents to work with our birth families mm -hmm. um, so that we help that transition, that yeah. they work together as a team and we create life books for our kids, you know, your driver's roles in these kids' lives are a part of their their chapter. It's it's a big part of the chapter of their of their life. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And, and we take pride in that and knowing that that um, we do everything we can to try to help them and accommodate them. And 
even little things like you know you, you pick somebody up and they might be having a bad day, mm -hmm. and they'll they'll get in the back of the vehicle and they'll they'll sit there and they'll just start talking and saying, oh well this happened to me or this and this, and our drivers and they're all they all have great personalities anyway, but the training that we receive and stuff like that and how to talk to the talk to the clients and stuff like that, it makes them more relatable and easier to talk to. So. You know, the client may have started off in a really bad mood mm -hmm. in the beginning of the transport, and I'm willing to, percentage-wise, I'm willing to say 98% of the time, by the time they get out of that vehicle, they've got a smile on their face. That's wonderful. You know, and it's, it's you know, I, I love when my drivers come back or report back to the office or give me a call and just say, hey, you know, you know this happened, you know, so-and-so was in a really bad mood, and, you know, I just wanted to let you know, but... But by the time we were done, you know, they were laughing and having a grand old time. And, you know, every once in a while, even though we're kind of not supposed to, they'll, they'll stop and get them a donut or something. Yeah. Like donuts, you know, a little treat for the clients oh. or whatever. But, but that's what makes it all worthwhile, is seeing the smiles on these, on these children's faces. You mentioned in the training that your drivers are mandated reporters. That, that so they, they go through the mandated reporter training, which, so they know what to, to look for, what to ask, you know, what to, what to report. Has that ever been an, an issue where a child might make a disclosure to one of your drivers that they need to make a report on? Yes. Um, it, it has happened a couple times in the past, mm -hmm. and you know, our drivers are, are you know, they, they go by the book, they follow the rules, they will contact myself, then they'll call it and contact the Caroline and, and do the, um, the report over the phone, and then they'll go ahead and fill out the paperwork and submit the reports. Um, immediately upon finding something out like that, get in touch with the social workers to give them a heads up as to what's going on, um, and, you know, let the Caroline and the social workers follow through on, on the process and what needs to be done, if, if it needs to be addressed, if it's a serious issue, or, it would, or it's a non-serious issue, but that's not our determination to make. Mm -hmm. As you know, as a mandated reporter, anything that's disclosed to us, we need to report. Right, um, right. I actually, today, I, ironically, I got a phone call in between, I was doing interviews today, and I got a phone call from one of my drivers, and I, I couldn't take the call, but he sent me a text, he goes, I think I might have to make a report to the Caroline. So I, when I got a break, I called my driver and, and spoke to him, he had already reached out to the social worker. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a major concern. Quite, I mean, it was an issue because this child was acting out and hasn't acted out for the last four months or so that we've been transporting her. Mm -hmm. um, but today was just a weird day. So my driver was concerned about it. So even, you know, we gave the, work, gave the information to the social worker who had been in contact with her. Um, we're going to find out and let her make the determination whether or not it's, she's going to do some investigative work to see if we actually do have to make the report to the Caroline. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, our drivers have that keen sense and they pay attention to what goes on. Because as I told you before we, we came on, you know, I, I always say our drivers are the eyes and ears of DCF mm -hmm. because of the amount of time that we spend with these people. And we get to know them and we get to know when something's off mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's huge, and they take they take it very seriously. Um, and they're um, all, they're always on the lookout, and they're always, you know, the, the client's safety and well-being is paramount, and that's what we always consider first. Well, I, I think that it's wonderful to have that, that commitment from the drivers, that it's not just yeah. another person they're driving. It's not like a taxi cab service by any means or an Uber driver no, by any Uber means. not Uber or Lyft or anything no, like that. No, nothing no, nothing like that. I mean, the commitment and the, um, the level of involvement they're having with our kids. So, so tell me about a parent being involved in that transport. Do you ever have a driver pick up a child and then pick up the parent and then go to a, a visit or, or, or at their home or visit sometimes at the home? Sometimes, yeah. Um, we, we do transport both the children and in the biological parents mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the the client siblings as well because they may be in foster care at another um, home or they you know it could be with mm -hmm. with the, their uh, brother or sister um, but we don't transport them together um, so if we have uh, if we are transporting both the parent and the and the child will assign one driver to pick up the child or the children mm -hmm. to bring them to the visit, and we'll assign another driver to pick up the parent and bring them to the visit. Mm -hmm. um, generally, the visits are at a, um, either a DCF office mm -hmm. or like uh, family and children's aid, someplace like that, mm -hmm. um, or even out in the community sometimes. We'll meet at in a, a mall mm -hmm. or a park or wherever, and mm -hmm. we never release the children until the person who's supposed to supervise the visit is there. 
um, and following protocols. So, um, you know, the child's always in our care until we can mm -hmm. give that child to the appropriate person. So what if a, a visit, you know, a supervised visit disrupts and the ch it's going to end a little bit sooner? Is your driver nearby so that they can bring the child right back? Yeah, we, we do tend to keep the, the driver um, in the general area. Mm -hmm. We try not to schedule something during the time of that visit, if at all possible. If there's a quick stop where we can go and pick somebody else up and transport them, we'll do it quickly, but our drivers are always in the general radius of where the visit is. Because there have been times where we've, we've dropped somebody off and have mm -hmm. my driver's gotten the call from the social worker or whoever's supervising the visit being like, this is not going well, we need you to get back here. Mm -hmm. And we're usually either right outside or in the general area. So. so are there any other um, responsibilities that your unit has other than transporting a child and a, um, and a parent to a visit? Are there other? Yeah, um, as with COVID going on now, we, um, we're, we're housed in Middletown mm -hmm. and we're on the old um, uh, CJTS property. And we, are, we have a warehouse there, which is stocked with PPE. Mm -hmm. So we are responsible for um, receiving shipments of PPE in and then distributing that PPE to all 14 area DCF offices. Um, and then along with the, the area offices, we also are responsible for getting together uh, the PPE for all the providers that the agency uses. And, and the wow. providers, as you know, are kind of like a subcontractor to mm -hmm. DCF, so we've got at any given time, we've got people coming in to pick up PPE or we're delivering it out. So we try and, and coordinate those deliveries with visits that are happening in those areas of, of where the offices are located. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, we also will, um, if we have, get a request in to uh, transport paperwork or personnel files, stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, we will go to different offices or different facilities that the agency oversees and we will pick stuff up and act as a courier service and bring them to our central office in Hartford or to another area office, stuff like that. Wow. So. Well, I know I had the pleasure of interacting with um, you and your drivers, like I said at the beginning of the show, picking up toys all yeah. over Connecticut and bringing them to a donated space so that families could shop for their kids. And they were most gracious um, in, in doing that. Um, we're, we're getting towards the end of our show. Are there any stories or a story that you can think of that you've experienced or your driver may have experienced in um, a child and a family visiting and a, a happy ever after ending? Yeah, I, I, I mean, there, there's, there's so many, honestly, and they all kind of luckily end the same. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the best stories are the ones that when you start off with, with a transportation request from mm -hmm. a social worker and every request that we get has a, it, it, you fill out the general information. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the location of the pickup, the drop off, um, who's supervising the visit, the, the, the client's age and all these different things. And at the top right hand corner of this request is the start date and the end date. Mm -hmm. And everything's, generally the start date is the start date, but the end date is always tentative. Mm -hmm. We get some that are, that will be over in a couple months, and then you've got some that go on for a year or maybe longer. And is and, that the tentative date that they'll indicate on there that this is gonna be a long-term arrangement? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So as you go through, I'll, I'll use a year for an mm -hmm. example. As you go through the course of that year, and for the first few months, you'll, you'll have a, a request for transportation, say one day a week, mm -hmm. and it's a one hour visit. And then fast forward a couple months and you start to see, okay, now we're gonna meet on you know, Tuesday and Wednesday. So now it's two days a week and now it's for two hours. Mm. And then fast forward a couple months and then all of a sudden you get, okay, you've got two visits this week, but they're unsupervised. Mm. And then you get to, okay, now we're gonna do an overnight unsupervised. And you watch the transition of this case and you start to see that, okay, good things are happening here. Mm -hmm. And everything, you know, everything's coming together and this, this is gonna work out. And there's no greater feeling than getting an email, like I told you before, from a social worker that's saying, thank you very much for everything that your drivers have done uh, for our client uh, this upcoming Tuesday is going to be our last visit. There is a reunification taking place and 
the family is going to be brought back together. Wow. And, and you get that email and you read it and it's just like, like I get choked up about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I, I really I know. do because yeah. it's like. And you see it, it. You saw the progression and, happen. Yeah. And you, you see how you started off and it was just like, oh God, you know, everyone's kind of like, boy, this is, you know, wish, wish it was a better situation. Mm -hmm. And then you see the biological parent or parents putting in the work mm -hmm. and the, you know, the requirements of DCF. Um, and they put in that work and they get everything done that they need to get done. And to see the children reunited with their, with their biological parents, there, there's nothing greater. There really isn't. But I think it's important to note, and I'm sure my viewers are, are going to agree with me, is that you know, you're such an integral part of that puzzle because you're lifting a barrier that our families have. And that barrier is often transportation a absolutely. and that timely transportation. And, and having a child grow through the trauma that they've experienced by having that same face and that driver and the consistency and the dependability and that they can count on that person being there to get them, to take them where they need to go. And sometimes, as you know, at the beginning of a case, a child could be frightened yes. um, to, to go in a car with a stranger or go visit a parent um, because the dynamics of their family has changed. And I think that what you and your staff are doing um, to help the whole the case goal of reunification is is truly tremendous. It is. It definitely is. And, you know, it's the, the unit as a whole does an incredible job and the training and the people that oversee the unit. You know, there's John uh, McCarthy, John DePilla, mm -hmm. um, uh, Cindy Butterfield, um, all the people behind the scenes that have helped to make this unit what it is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, a tremendous credit to, to their capabilities as you know, managers and supervisors and stuff like that. And obviously without the drivers, we wouldn't have a unit. And they are, they are the heart and soul of our operations and we are very fortunate to have the people that we have. Well, and we as an agency are, are fortunate that, that the vision came to a reality. Absolutely. Um, so thank you so much for joining us well, on Doors to Hope and me. Healing. Um, thank you for watching, um, and we'll see you next time. As the infection rates of the coronavirus are rapidly increasing. How are we going to afford this? Public health officials are continuing to stress the importance of social distancing in an attempt to flatten the curve. Any kid, any gender, it could be your child. There are child sex trafficking victims in every county in Connecticut. More than 200 victims here each year. Kids being lured and sold on social media with promises of love, promises of stardom. No child is ever a prostitute. If you or someone you know is a victim, call 888-373-7888 or text BE FREE to 233-733. Riverview Apartments is Bristol's two-time beautification award-winning residence community for adults age 55 and older. They offer one or two-bedroom apartments with modern appliances, air conditioning, wall-to-wall -wall carpet, and tiled floors. Both heat and hot water are included. Riverview also offers a wide range of activity rooms that include a billiard parlor and a spacious community room. It is handicap accessible with safe, secure parking for tenants and ample off-street parking for visitors. 860-940-6757 or riverviewbristol.com.